uh, freelancing for uh, beginners. So uh, I, I have another session tomorrow where we are kind of uh, concluding this series, uh, wrapping everything up. So today is like the last but one uh, session. Now, previously, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, all the videos are available on your student uh, uh, dashboard and also on YouTube. So you can, uh, I request you to check out the previous um, episodes as well. Uh, so just to give a quick idea. So previously what I did was um, I talked about how social media uh, helps a freelancer, you know, build like a reputation, which is, it makes it easy to convince and uh, get hired by clients and so on. One of those social media things is uh, maintaining blogs, uh, where I personally use these two brands called Medium and Substack. So I was able to uh, talk about that in the previous session. So that's what happened before. Uh, now today, uh, I want to talk about something. I mean, obviously, you know, th this is like a a standard thing now. Like when I when we started this session. On, on the whole freelancing thing many, many months ago. Uh, yeah, I was just starting. I had no idea how important it would become. So I thought before I wrap up the this series, uh, I mean, I've, I've, I've touched upon AI because I can't not use it, so I do use it. But then I figured, okay, before I wrap it up, I need to spend at least one session totally on AI. So in this session, what I want to do is I would like to uh, tell you uh, which are the different AI tools that I use? So again, everything I have done in this series is all about things that I have personally done. So every every episode is about, if I'm talking about finances, then that is something which is from my own experience. If I'm talking about uh, using AI tools, so again, I am speaking uh, from experience, how it has uh, helped me uh, get things done a little bit faster. And of course, I'm going to talk about other aspects of AI as well. So that's why I use the title like faster freelancing. Now, of course, AI has some concerns and things like that. Uh, I don't know if I'll touch upon that, but if somebody asks a question about it, maybe I'll talk about it. But otherwise, I want to focus on the positive side of AI. I want to focus on uh, how this whole AI technology can be useful to you as a freelancer to, so that you can get the work done faster. Now, what does it mean getting work done faster? Getting work done faster simply means if there was some work that would take one hour, maybe if you use AI, it can be completed in 50 minutes or 40 minutes or even early. So that way you are finishing the work faster and that means you can get more work done and hopefully you can make a little bit more money. That is why I like to use the word uh, using AI plus faster freelancing as the title of this uh, chapter. So what is AI? You already know what it is. AI is the uh, many, many uh, artificial intelligence tools that are now available. A, a lot of times when you think of AI, immediately you think about uh, the common brands, you know, like, uh, chat GPT for chatting related things, um, mid journey or DAL E for image generation and so on and so forth. So these are the different things that come that should come to your mind when we talk about AI. And why is it suddenly everywhere? So it is it is like a thing. Um, uh, you know it is it was always there. The AI was always there. I remember when we were younger and all that. I, I mean not younger like even before I used to play a lot of video games. So we used to, you know, whenever we talk about video games, we would say something like, okay, the video game AI is really good uh, and stuff like that. So AI is not like completely new. It was always there in one way or the other form, but now it has reached a point where it is now easy to use. I mean, before, if you have to use AI, you have to use some, algorithm or some dedicated service or something like that. It was not freely available, but now AI is kind of freely available. And of course there are many paid services as well. And it has become easy to use. And it is also like more uh, believable and practical. You can actually use it as part of your daily lives. So I think that is why I believe uh, again, all this is from my experience. That is why, because it is so easy to use now, like it's available on my computer, 
It's available on your phone, on your tablet. You can actually get some work done using these AI tools. So I believe that is why AI is now suddenly everywhere. It is like the new thing. You know, it's like 10 years ago when everybody was like, oh, do you have a smartphone? You know, 10 years ago, the smartphones were new. Uh, not 10 years ago, I think maybe 12 years ago or 13 years ago. Like that is when smartphones were really, really new. Like when I was in college, like some 20 years ago or something, laptops were new. So everybody is like, hey man, this laptop is good. That laptop is good. Like this, you know, like, and and then, then, then some 25 years ago, it's like the internet. Hey, do you have internet? You know what you can do with the internet. So every five years, every 10 years, you know, there's always some uh, innovation happening, happening. And when the innovation suddenly becomes available to everyone, uh, then everybody is using it. I mean, we, nobody talks, nobody cares about the new iPhone. Nobody cares about the new Android phone. Nobody cares about a new laptop anymore. It's all old, but because it's now part of life, like again, 10, 10, 12 years ago in India, having a smartphone was a big deal. A very few people had it, but now everybody has smartphones. I, I myself have so many smartphones. I don't even know how many I have. So like that, right? So same thing now, AI is new. It is slowly, slowly getting, becoming part of our life. Uh, and I, I guess it's going to become a part of life, just like smartphones, just like smartphone apps, laptops, tablets, like video calls. You know, very few people knew how to do video calls before the pandemic. And then the pandemic happened. Everybody got used to it. So again, the same thing like right now, you know, virtual sessions. So I think that is what is happening with AI. It is like the next technology that is becoming part of our life. In two, three years, everybody will be using it and it will become part of our life. So it has started. It's been a year now. And I think this hype will carry on for another year another two years maybe, and then it will just become part of life. So the sooner we learn how to use these things, the people who learn it faster will be ahead when it becomes part of common life. And, and that, is, that is my guess. I mean, who knows what will happen, right? Uh, so what are the common things you can do with AI? What are the things I am already doing for my freelancing life with AI. So the most important thing I like, the one that I use a lot, I, I'll show some of these AI tools. I'm not going to talk about it. I'll also show it as well uh, after I just finish off my quick intro and things like that. So the first thing is, of course, you can create images. I mean, that's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think about AI. It's like, hey, you know, you can create images using AI. We'll talk about the brands and everything in a minute. Uh, creating designs, you know. Uh, uh, so remember, like, you, designs in a sense, like, you know, a lot of these AI, like for example, Canva, I talked about Canva, I think in one of the sessions, uh, uh, not as a dedicated session, but as a part of a session. So, you know, in Canva, you create this marketing material, designing material, things like that. Now AI can create the design for you. Like if you are creating a, uh, let's say a brochure or a, or a flyer or an invitation, you can just ask AI to create an invitation and the whole invitation, graphics, letters, words, background, color, everything will be done, will be done by AI. Uh, creating content again. So this is where uh, if you are working as a content writer, if you're working on a, uh, a paper or report and things like that, AI can generate the content for you. So whatever you're working on, it's really good. Uh, you know, like I am actually uh, doing uh, pursuing pursuing a degree uh, in BA literature. A lot of times, you know, some of these books are really really big, especially these Greek books, mythology books. Uh, history books and stuff like that. So whenever I'm like getting confused, like too much of stuff, I just use AI to give me a summary of the chapter, ask questions about characters. Very, very easy. So again, content, AI content. Code, uh, I work as a tutor, you know, tutor, uh, other than giving workshops of freelancing and life coaching and business coaching. Obviously I do tutoring as a software developer. I do development work. Again, AI is really, really good. It has really helped me do things faster and, and make a lot of money as well in the process. So again, creating code is another thing AI can really do. Now, I haven't tried these things. The creating voice, I have looked at it. It may be useful for people who are in the you know multimedia type of freelancing. I haven't done it. I, I have podcasts and things like that uh, where I sometimes I'm experimenting. I don't have anything real right now because... Uh, but yeah, you can create voice. You can even train your voice, you know, like uh, you can create AI to speak like you. Very, very scary stuff. I haven't experimented it that much, but I know it's there. Uh, you know, again, music, there are AI music generators, like without having to worry about 
paying for music or getting some music from somewhere. You can create music with AI. Again, I've tested it. Nothing, nothing deep like the other things, like images, designs, content, code. These things I've used. Uh, but the voice and music, I just touched upon it. So a little exposure. So I can only say that much about that. So right then. So these are the different things you can do with AI. These are all the things I do in my freelancing life. Uh, like, for example, the images. When I, I told you blogging just in the beginning, I mentioned in the previous session, I talked about how you can have blogs on Medium and Substack. And every time I create a blog post, I use an image created by AI. It's so, so nice. So that's one of an example how AI is going to, he's helping me already to become a better uh, freelancer. So let's, let's go to the next part. Like now when it comes to AI, my dear students, there are two ways to use it. Okay, two, two ways. Now, the first thing is AI on the cloud. Now, what does that mean? But for, before that, let me talk about AI on your computer okay now like let me just quickly go somewhere here let me just open to an example of ai so whenever i want something to happen i usually use the microsoft ai things okay so let me just get that here so there is this new thing that started a few months ago i think it's called microsoft copilot uh yeah let me just get that here uh yeah there you go so i'm just bringing it up on the screen okay so what are you seeing right now on the screen is the uh, Microsoft Copilot. Okay, so this is where this is one of the many AI things I use this a lot because this is like a combination of many many things. It can help me with coding. It can help me with design. It can help me with uh, textings and stuff like that. So uh, I mean, I'm sure many of you are already using it. But if you're not using it, then use it now. There is a free version available. There's a paid version available. I'll talk about that in a few minutes. So let's just ask something. I'll just say, give me a summary of the Odyssey, you know, like, you know, guys, there's a book called the Odyssey, which, uh, which is there in my BA literature uh, study class. So uh, I, I want to know about the Odyssey. I can simply ask uh, AI, you know, give me a summary of the Odyssey. So it will give me a summary and it's a Greek poem and stuff like that. They will start generating the content. See, this is what I'm talking about, like how useful it can be. Like when I'm studying this book, uh, I definitely enjoy using this because this gives me an idea like you know like before i can read the book it, it, and also these books are like in old english sometimes it can be difficult to study and all so this is one way um, ai helps me but i'm showing this to you because i'm really talking about ai on your on on the cloud see this is what i mean by ai on the cloud ai on the cloud means whatever ai you're trying to use like right now i'm trying to understand more about this book called the odyssey so I'm able to go to this website, microsoftcopilot.com, and I was able to get the information. Now I can do the same thing on my smartphone, on my iPad. I can do the same thing on my other laptops, other computers. So it is available on the cloud. It is available on the internet. Okay, so this is what I say, AI on the cloud. Same thing with image generators, voice generators, you know, all these AI services run on the cloud. But there is a small problem with that. We will come back to that later. Uh, now let's talk about another way you can use AI is AI on your computer, okay? So now whatever AI is available on the internet, okay, whatever AI is available on the internet, something similar AI will, is also possible for you to run on your computer, okay? Now, how, how does that help? Let's let's use a very, very simple example. Now I go here, okay? And I'm going to go to another AI called Bing Image Creator, okay? So I'll go to this thing called Bing Image Creator. And here uh, you see that on the right side, I hope you can see it on the screen, uh, there is a number called 15. It means I have 15 images that I can generate. So I can say something like uh, a Indian tutor taking a class about computers in the classroom evening well lit 
digital paint. So what I did is what I typed, guys, this is what is called as a prompt, okay? Let me just type that here so you know what I'm talking about. So what that means is, uh, so what is that called is a prompt. A prompt is what you type in AI to get uh, what you want from the AI. So this is what is called, you may have heard about this prompt engineering. There are some prompt workshops, prompt classes, prompt tutorial. Uh, maybe you want to learn it after this presentation. Uh, so yeah, so what I did is I typed a prompt. So I'm trying to create an image of an Indian tutor, you know, like me taking a class in the classroom. So I type what I want and I use some extra things like it is evening, there is good amount of light and I want a artist painting type of photo. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on create here. And in a few seconds, uh, the image will get created. We'll wait for it, we'll wait for it. <clears throat> we'll just wait for it. Ah, there you go. So you can see that a number of images have been created. Uh, let me see which one I like, I like this one. So there you go. So I can go ahead and download this image. I can use it in my blog. I can use it in my, if I'm writing a paper, I can use it here. I can, if I'm doing marketing, I can use it on my LinkedIn. I can use it on my podcast. So this is how image AI is really helping me. So if I, if I did not have AI, what I have to do, I have to go online uh, to a website like unsplash.com or something. And then I have to search for a teacher in classroom, mm -hmm. Indian guy. So I, I have to go to a photo website and you know, look, I can't find an Indian guy photo at all. So there you go. So I, my options are, oh, there it is. I can, maybe I can use something like this, but that is not an Indian guy. That's not the photo I want. I'm not happy with that photo. See, this is one way AI really, really helps. See, look at this photo. This is exactly what I wanted. An Indian person taking a a classroom session. A classroom looks nice. It looks very Indian style, Indian students, you know, like that. So this is what I liked about AI and how it helps me. So if I'm writing a blog, if I'm making a YouTube video, I have the perfect image. If I'm not happy with this image, I can create another image. But, but, but what is the problem here? What is the problem? What is the issue with this? Now, if I go back to this uh, creator here, I told you last time there was a number 15, okay? So which means, let's say, what if I want more than 15 images? I won't be able to do it. I mean, I can try, but it'll be very slow. Or, uh, you know, I might get a message on the screen that says, you can't create more than 15 images. You have to come back tomorrow or after some days. So that is, the, that is the limitation I am talking about. And a lot of times you may want something specific uh, and the AI will not create it. It will not do it at all. It will just say, I don't want to create it. I cannot create it or it is blocked. It is not allowed. So there'll always be some restrictions uh, and things like that. So that is what I mean uh, and it, when, I, when I say that AI on the cloud and AI on the computer. Okay, so there may be times when uh, the online services will limit you with the number of things that you can create, how much you can use them. And of course, uh, you know, with, with online services, uh, if you want something better, you have to pay for it. You know, for example, right now, I'm using the Copilot free version, but if I go online, and search for Copilot Pro. There it is. Okay, there you go. You can see here there's something called Copilot Pro, and it is actually very expensive. You can see the price here. Uh, that is the pricing in, in Indian rupees, which is roughly about, I think, about 20 to $25 per month. So that is a lot of money, you know, 25 to $30, I think. So that is a lot of money. So, but I mean, it's very useful, I'm sure, but it still costs a lot of money. So there you go. So now again, even with the paid version, 
there will be some limitations on how much you can use every day, what kind of images you can create and things like that. So that is the, uh, the point I'm trying to make here. So, so for example, if you want to do images, you know, the online services are there, but uh, if I don't want to use this online thing, or maybe I don't, I don't have the money to pay for it, then I can use some uh, free versions of AI available, which can run on my computer. Uh, for example, let me see if I have mentioned it. Uh, I have not mentioned it here, uh, but for example, for images, there is something called stability AI. So I, yeah, th that's the one, yeah, stability AI. So this is like a free image generator, which you can use. Oh, not this one, sorry, sorry, uh, hold on. <laughs> this one, sorry. Uh, yes, stability diffusion. Okay, so there you go, folks. So, this is the one stability, stable diffusion, stable diffusion. Yes, so this is the one which is available. Uh, there you go. So, this is this will also help you create AI images, but it runs on your computer. So, if you get if you, it, there's no charge for anything, but of course, there must be a problem, there must be some reason. Uh, what is the drawback here? The drawback here is to do these things, you need a good computer, okay? Like right now, I'm talking to you on my iPad and the presentation I'm showing you on my Windows laptop. My Windows laptop cannot run this AI software. My iPad cannot run the AI software. I have a Mac, you know, a, a very good Mac mini new one. I bought it only a few months ago. It can, it can run this, but the very, very difficulty, very, very slowly. But I have some really expensive gaming computers. Now, those things, those big computers that I have in my office, yeah, they can run these things. So that is the one thing, you know, like with online services, you can use it anywhere. It's in the cloud. There is no limitation. There is There are some, I mean, like where you can use it, like you can use it on the iPad, can use it on your computer, on your phone, but there'll be limitations. You, know, you have to pay a lot of money if you want to use all the extra features. You want to use more images. You want to create high quality images. Costs a lot of money. Another option is you can run it on your own computer, but then you need to have a powerful computer. So there you go. Like, same thing with you know, uh, content AI, voice AI, music AI. For anything which is there paid, there is always a free option. Uh, but also there will be an option where you can run all this AI on your computer. Now, when you run it on your computer, it'll be totally free, but you must have a very powerful gaming computer. Like I have this gaming computer, which is like uh, $3,000, very expensive for me, you know, very expensive. So those computers, uh, uh, you know, like uh, cost a lot of money, but that means I can do whatever I want with AI. I don't have to pay anybody and also privacy. So those things will run on a computer. Nobody will know what you're trying to do. And maybe there are some things, you know, something you're, you're writing something very uh, personal or something for your college project or something. Uh, these online companies, they record everything. So they, they, they want to keep a track of everything that you're doing. So again, there you go. So that's the main thing I'm trying to say, guys. With AI, there is free services like like what I'm doing right now, like uh, this co-pilot that I'm using, uh, where is that? Yeah, like uh, right now I'm using the free version. I can say like, hey, uh, create an image of a dog and cat dancing. So I can say, I can say, I can use the free version. I can ask the free version to do something for me and it'll do it. So that is one thing. But again, it will be a little slow. The quality will not be that good. Sometimes it will not work, uh, things like that. Now, there is also the paid version, same Copilot. Uh, whenever I'm working on a project, I purchase Copilot Pro. Right now, I'm kind of on a vacation, so I don't have Copilot Pro. But whenever I have a project, I pay this, you know, $25, $30 per month, I use it. Because it really helps me when I'm working for a client, it really makes things fast. So I'll pay for it. I'll get premium features. So there you go, the free version. There you go, look at that, a cat and a dog dancing together. So that is happening on the free version. So there's a free version with some limitations. There is the paid version, right, which you can pay for. There are many services like that, but the one I like to use 
uh, when I'm working with a client is Copilot Pro. Uh, there's another one called uh, GitHub Copilot. The same name because they're both from the same brand. So you have GitHub Copilot, there it is. That is for coding only. Whereas, um, there you go. This is only for coding, guys. So again, whenever I'm working on a software project, I go ahead and use, pay for these things. But when I'm not right now, I'm on vacation, so I'm not paying for this thing. So again, this is only for coding related. Uh, another option is uh, there's something called Adobe Firefly. I have used this uh, whenever I am working on a photo project. Like whenever I'm, sometimes I do these photography assignments with Photoshop and uh, mainly with Photoshop. Uh, with, with Adobe Firefly is there. Uh, so again, that's another option for you. I don't know. I think they are saying there is a free version, but I don't think there is when I try to use it. Uh, I think they made me pay for it. I don't know. So anyway, so there you go. So there are many, many services, whether free services, paid services, and totally free is, uh, of course, uh, are things that you can install on your computer. So there is a cost of AI. There is. So and again, everything, every good thing has has some cost, uh, you know, nothing is free in this world. So as a freelancer, you have to decide uh, how do you balance this? So what I do guys, you know, this is what I do, okay? Now, as I, sh as I showed to you already, these things cost a lot of money, whether you are running on your own, okay? Whether you're running on your own uh, computer or, uh, whether you're using the cloud or whether in the free one or the paid one, there's always a cost involved. So what I do is, depending on the project, see, this is very important. This is where I'm talking with the freelancer. You are a freelancer, what should you do? When you're on a project, go ahead and get the paid service, okay? So like uh, whenever I'm working on a software development project, I get the GitHub AI. Uh, that is like 10 or $15 per month. Uh, whenever I'm working on a, a project, not coding project, but content project, you know, whenever I'm doing like a, a content project, and like for example, uh, uh, till February, till, uh, till two weeks ago, for the last eight months, nine months, I was working for a US company where we are developing a, a curriculum, coding curriculum project where we had to create a lot of content, photos, coding, uh, writing content, all kinds of things. So then I was, I, I had the Copilot Pro special. So whenever I'm working for, on a multimedia project, uh, like images, photography, Photoshop, uh, digital art, uh, things like that, I purchased the Adobe Firefly service. Okay, uh, so this is what I would recommend, guys. You know, these things cost a lot of money, but I'm telling you, uh, you know, just by paying $10 or $20 or $30, you are able to save time. So whatever, like when I'm working on a software project, if AI is there, it'll keep helping me. And then work that it takes six hours, I, I'm able to finish it in four hours. So. I can finish the work early. I can charge the customer a little bit more money or I can work for another customer because I have a little bit of extra free time. So the solution is these things are expensive, but you have to make sure that you uh, buy them only when you need them. So this is not like a car that you are buying and keeping it in front of your house. This is more like a car that you're renting when you go on a vacation or something. So you're only renting the car for the number of days you are vacationing. So that is the best way to use these AI uh, services, okay? So that is what I would say to how do you balance these things? How do you balance? Because you can't, you can't use them when you're not working on a project. It doesn't make uh, any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all to have these things all the time. So buy them use them, benefit from them, and go away. And the last option, of course, is if you have the money or if you're already a computer gamer, if you already have an expensive computer and things like that, 
then you know these things uh, they need a little bit of coding knowledge but you know it's not too much of coding knowledge if you know how to go online watch some youtube video and things like that like for example i mentioned this uh, stability uh, where is that i mentioned this step stable diffusion you know if you are interested in learning how images work you know like ai stuff you can always go online and find some youtube tutorial or something which can show you how to install these things on your computer uh, as we said you know ai has been there for some 2 to 3 years now and now they are trying to make it as easy as possible for even non technical people to use this on your computer if you have a powerful computer you know a, a normal laptop uh, basic computers will not run my dear students so you must have a powerful machine to do these things on these uh, so that's the, that's the key thing uh, guys the cost of ai ai is really useful but it will cost you something uh, the free services are good i know there are a lot of people who are like okay i'll manage the free service uh, maybe you can if you can manage i'm happy for you uh, but in my experience when i'm working on a project really really working on a project and i really need the ai to do something you know like during the rush hour month and during office hours that is when the free service will say hey i'm busy right now you are a free customer you know you'll get a message like that and you can't use it so so everything goes for a toss so so anyway that is the cost of the ai so i want to I, i already mentioned these things so I, i i have another yes i still have some time so what are the ai tools and what do they do so i hope you have your you know uh, book and pen and paper i hope you're already taking notes those who are my regular students you know i ask you to take notes when you're when i'm talking uh, the more, most common ai tools is of course uh chat gpt now that is something which you already know from the news and everything like that i don't use chat gpt personally i used to use it before uh uh but i know people like to use it um so yes yeah, so if you still like to use chat gpt the original ai uh then just go to the uh chat gpt website i think they still have a free version just go to the chat gpt website and just log in with a, a google account uh, i think they have an option where i think you can just log in with a google account last time i used it. yeah there it is you can log in with a google account or a microsoft account or an apple account really really up to you which one you want to use it i don't use it i stopped using it i'll tell you why uh, but yes when a few months ago like 6 months ago 8 months ago i tried it out i tried to use it and all that so that is option number 1 for your ai stuff again for creating content finding information finding things and so on and so forth the second one which is my personal favorite is the one that i've showed you in this class which is microsoft copilot now this is what i use every day my dear students so whenever whether i pay for it whether it is free or whatever it is i prefer microsoft copilot now the reason for this is simple i already am a microsoft customer i already uh, i've been using i think i mentioned this in the videos i even have a award from microsoft some 10 years ago not now not now when i was young i even got an award from microsoft i work on dot net and all that so i'm already a microsoft guy so whenever i see ai whatever new technology comes if the new technology is coming from microsoft then i like to use with microsoft because i already have everything with them so you know the ai the copilot it works with microsoft word it works with my cloud devices it works with my uh, email so, so it's always nice so for me as a microsoft person you know person who's been using microsoft products for both work and personal life copilot makes more sense to me so they have a nice free version which is good for casual use whenever i have some project whether it's a development project coding project content project video project whatever it is copilot has everything so this is my recommendation so if you are taking my recommendation this is what i would recommend guys especially if you're going to pay for it so and also uh, just to let you know you can see here uh, the copilot uses chat gpt under the hood 
So I, I am indirectly using uh, chat GPT only uh, because Microsoft, I think, also owns 50% of chat GPT company. So they are both really the same. But for me, this is easy, uh, as I told you already, because I'm already a Microsoft customer. So that is the recommended option. Uh, if you're thinking like after the workshop, you're like, Jay, which AI service should I use on a daily basis? Both are really the same. Uh, but I, of course, recommend uh, Copilot because I'm a Microsoft preferred person. So uh, next thing, of course, I already mentioned this before is if you are a coding freelancer, you know, like if you're trying to become a freelance a developer or maybe you're trying to become like me, a freelance a coding tutor and things like that, then for coding only, very, very important, for coding only, my personal recommendation from my own experience is GitHub Copilot. Now, why do I like this? Obviously, in coding also, there are so many different AI brands. Now, I like Copilot because if you're coding, I'm sure I have shown this in the previous classes. Let me just show you guys. In coding, we use something called Visual Studio Code. I am sure I've shown this on, on some other session. So if you're a coding freelancer, you're trying to get into coding, programming freelancer, then you have to use Visual Studio Code. Now, the reason why I recommend GitHub Copilot is because it is directly integrated into VS Code. That's why I'm recommending it. You know, of all the, there are many, many AI code software available. You know, all of them I'm sure are good, but I recommend GitHub Copilot. Again, it is for Microsoft. So I'm always that Microsoft guy. Uh, it is direct, what main reason is it is directly integrated into, you know, Visual Studio Code. Tight integration, very easy to use. You know, like when you're typing code, uh, the remaining code will automatically come. It's very nice. It's really, really nice. I totally love it. Okay, okay. So that's another service that I will recommend uh, for, for you. Now, the third service that I want to talk about is Adobe Firefly. Now, I think they have a free version now, uh, but I always go for the paid version. I use it when I'm working on photo projects, design projects, content projects. Anything with visuals, guys, anything related to Photoshop, like when I say Photoshop, you know what I'm talking about, photo-related projects, design-related projects, so where you have to create images of people, images of things. Now, I, of course, you know, the, the cool pilot can create images, right? We created some image of some cat, dog, or something. We did it like, like some two minutes ago, we did it, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we did some images, right? So, yeah, we did some images a few minutes ago. So, Copilot can create images. But you have to understand, when you're working with some art projects or design projects and things like that, you really want that creative type things. And nobody does creative things better than, than Adobe, okay? So, if you're a designer freelancer, if you are into design, graphic work, font related work, UI related work, you know, things like that. If you're in that creative side of freelancing, then I highly recommend Adobe Firefly. On the website, they are saying there is a free version. I don't know. I haven't worked on a design project in many months. Uh, but whenever I'm working, as I said, I'll pay for the Photoshop subscription. When you buy a Photoshop subscription, you get Adobe Firefly premium version with Photoshop purchase. So, but yes, so for design things, the quality of images, the quality of designs, everything is really, really great when, with Adobe Firefly. So there you go, my dear students. So that is when you will use Adobe Firefly. Now, don't forget, there is also another brand like Mid Journey, which people say is really good. And I showed you the free version. Oh, I mentioned there itself, Bing Image Creator. So they all can create images. But in my personal opinion, um, Adobe Firefly has the best image creating uh, facility. They're better than whatever else these other people are uh, doing and stuff like that. So these are the main tools that I have used in the last uh, one year, you know, I remember, I remember signing up for GitHub Copilot 
many, 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 many. I think more than a year ago, I was already there. Um, I even participated in the beta test and all those things for the GitHub AI. Um, so, 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 yeah. So there you go, guys. So that is this is the tools uh, that I am using uh, since many, many. Uh, uh, there's some. Oh, I don't know. Some line came. It kind of distracted me. I don't know. Anyway. So there you go, folks. These are all the things. Uh, before I go into questions, let me see. I still have five minutes. Is there anything else I have forgotten to mention? Uh, I think that is all the stuff I wanted to say. Now, since I have five minutes, maybe I can just talk about uh, how does this affect freelancing? You know, there are there are there is always some fear, some concerns that AI is going to affect the way you work. Uh, there is, guys. There is. I can give you an example uh, personally as well. Now, I work as a, a coding tutor, okay? So uh, that is how I make money. You know, a lot of times uh, I make a lot of money from teaching, from coding teaching. Now, what is happening is for, in the last one year, I am seeing less students coming for coding classes. Okay, now I am a coding tutor, I teach coding, but already this year I can feel it, you know, I can feel it like a lot of students, what they're doing is they have stopped taking classes or they're taking less classes because now they are able to learn many of these coding concepts from AI. Now that is a real life example for you how AI can affect you. Like it is already affecting me. You know, I'm getting less work because a number of things that I want to teach is already being taught by AI. There you go, work is getting affected. But so what is the solution for that? So the solution is, you know, very, very uh, simple, my dear students. You know, the solution is, see the AI students who are, who are coming to me, they're still students coming to me, but they come to me after uh, to learn those things which AI cannot teach. You know, like the AI is good, but maybe right now, I don't know the future. Uh, students, uh, they are able to learn the basics and simple things from AI. So only that part of teaching, they don't want me. But whatever is advanced programming, you know, like for example, AI can teach you simple concepts, but right now, maybe in the future, I don't know, but AI cannot teach how to build software because building software is very, very complex, right? It, it requires a lot of discussions and, and, you know, like a big amount of thinking and there's, there, the, the, in those things, the students still need me. So yes, AI is going to affect your work. You know, my, to, I take my own example. I'm sure some work which I was going to get, some money that I was going to make is already, you know, like gone from me because AI is able to do it. But there are so many things right now. I don't know the future. AI cannot do it. Cannot do complex things. Somebody, you know, like again, somebody said, something about empathy. You know, there are some students like who, who want some motivation stuff, you know, like again, you know, career coaching. And you know, I do a lot of coaching stuff. So career coaching and things like that, which right now AI can say things, but you know, sometimes you need a, a not sometimes, a lot of times you need a real person to talk to you and stuff like that. So what this means for you as a freelancer? One, yes, some work will be taken from your hands. Uh, by AI, like any other technology, okay? But at the same time, what you have to do, what I am already doing, like I knew someday this will happen. I didn't know AI will come, but I knew something will come, right? So many years ago, I, I, I told myself, look, before somebody else comes, I should become an advanced teacher. So I, I learned how to teach advanced things which you know, which which cannot be taught. Now AI is coming, it's taking away all the simple, simple teaching, which is good. So now I can just focus on teaching advanced things. Uh, if you are teaching advanced things, it is more money anyway. 
So there you go. So that is how you prepare for it. So what you have to do is, yeah, that's another reason why I tell people, use AI, see what it can do so that you can do the things that AI cannot do. So that way you will keep getting work. Right, that is that is my advice to anybody who is concerned. So think of AI as your friend. You know, it's like I have the story, guys. I've told this before, I'm sure. It is like when you know when I was in college, uh, and then I'll take questions. I think I'm almost yeah out of time. Yeah. So the story is like this. So when when I was in college, we used to go to college in the bus, right? So how it how it is like every day in the morning, you get up at nine o'clock, you go stand in the bus stop, you wait for the bus, the bus will come. Then you go to the nearest bus stop, get down, and from there you walk to college. It takes so much time. So now, and then I got my own bike, you know, like a two-wheeler, you know, like a motorbike. Now I don't have to wait for the bus. I can go where I want. I, I can go fast and all that. So AI is like a bike. It doesn't mean uh, the bus, nobody will use the bus. People who want to use the bus, they can use the bus. But you now, if you use AI, it's like a bike. You can go where you want faster, okay? You are still you. So now that you have a bike, you can do more things, better things. So that's what AI is really all about. It's about making your life as a freelancer better, save time, and maybe you can make some more money. That's the way I look at this whole AI situation. So guys, that is my time. That is my uh, 45 minutes. So uh, there you go. So uh, go ahead. Do you have any uh, questions? Uh, I will, I will uh, take it. I, I believe the As moderator said, is there. Uh, if yes, you yes. have any question, you can use the hand reaction or leave a comment in the chat. Uh, I'm gonna look at the chat. Uh, uh, let me see. Um, bup, 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 bup. Let me see. Oh. There is a question, how do I use it at design phase of software development? So I don't think it can do such complex things yet, Thomas. So yeah, I haven't seen any AI which can just do the entire designing phase. I think that is still human oriented, but maybe AI can help you create pictures and graphics, but then you can use those graphics and pictures in your design document, but I don't think it can do more than that. I don't think it can do the entire design, or maybe I haven't seen it yet. Uh, let's go uh, to the next one. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, right, okay. Again, another question from Thomas. It says, uh, which AI, paid AI uh, power backup system I, I don't know, Thomas. I, I don't, I haven't seen any AI that can design things. And I really don't know anything about power backup system, my friend. So I, I apologize. I don't have an answer uh, to that specific question. But again, it can, maybe if you are designing, it can help you create the graphics and the images. But I don't think these, these AI can create an entire design. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe, maybe there is somebody's doing it. I don't know. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, let's see, any other? Uh, uh, Lucia is saying, I think this is a conversation that we need to start. One day AI will take over our work and we'll soon find ourselves out of job. So uh, Lucia, again, I this is, uh, as, uh, as I said, I myself, I'm losing some work because it is being done by AI. But I don't think AI will take over anything. Uh, I'm, I'm more on the optimistic side of things. I feel like AI is like a friend. He's not here to replace us. I think AI is like a friend who can make me better. That's what, that's the way I look at AI. I mean, AI makes my blogging better. AI makes my podcast better. 
uh, as I said, I'm 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 going to college again. I'm 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 I'm, do, I'm, I'm doing a degree in BA literature, so it helps me study better. Uh, it helps me find things faster. It helps me teach better. It helps me code better. So I do not believe it is there to take over our life or work. I believe it is, it is like a smartphone. It is like a bike. It is like a laptop. It is there to make my life better. Uh, that's the way I look at it. I don't think AI can replace. Like, like I, I've been using AI for more than one year. I have used free services. I use paid services. I use the you know, running on the computer version of AI. What do they do really? You know, they can they have so many limitations. You know, so many times I'll tell the AI to do something and it can't do it. Something, even something simple, it can't do it. So maybe five, five years later, 10 years later, it'll become smarter, it'll become better. But for me, ultimately, it's like a bike. You know, like before I was going in the bus, but now I am, you know, like I'm going on a bike. So AI is like a bike. I use the bike to go to my college faster. So that's the way I look at it. But if we, of course there are concerns, yes. But for me, it's more of a friend. That's the way I look at it. Um, let's see, let's see. Uh, yes, yes guys, the, the, the video recording will be put on the YouTube channel and I believe on your dashboard as well. Uh, uh, so uh, yes. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Like that Will Smith movie. I think there was this movie where Will Smith has a clone, <laughs> uh, or some other movie, well, I Robot or something. I guess both these movies have some AI stuff going. Uh, another question is from Ruben. He says, "How to study coding?" Uh, Ruben, then if you want to take help from AI, then I would recommend you can use the free version of ChatGPT. Or uh, Copilot, you know, where you can ask coding questions and things like that. If you're looking for a standard way of learning coding, then my friend, let me just show you on my screen. I hope you're taking notes. Uh, hold on one second. Uh, let me just close this message window. Uh, guys, there is this really nice website called Free Code Camp. I highly recommend this. I have talked about Free Code Camp many times in many of my sessions, I use it in my classes and I've been using it for some four to five years now. I made a lot of money using this website because I use it in my teaching, in my classes. Many of my students have gotten jobs and all after using this website and I use it a lot. So if you are starting fresh for the first time, then use this free code camp Plus, also use the chat GPT or Microsoft Copilot and things like that. Okay, so that is the answer for that question. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, ba, 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 ba. That's the question from Ruben. Um, uh, Jimmy is asking me, what do you mean when you say freelancing or freelancer? Uh, for that, you have to watch all the videos. You know, this is the 10th video of what is freelancing. So hopefully you will watch the beginning videos. Can AI develop programs to enhance recruitment programs, Frederick? I don't know, Frederick. I don't know if they can do such things. I don't know. Uh, another question is Fidelio. Can AI make a summary of video content? Uh, Fidelio, I don't think it can. I know AI can write summaries from words, but from video, maybe it can do it. But as I said, anything with multimedia like even an image it takes almost 30 seconds to one minute to create an image and i i know there are ais for creating video also they take really long time like five minutes ten minutes so i am sure ai can do a summary of video i think even this right now this zoom uh they say they are doing summary based on the video record right so it's already happening but the cost, everything is cost, guys. When you talk about AI, so video, like if you are summarizing a document, it's words, take less time, less cost. If you are summarizing a photo, a little bit more time, a little bit more cost. So video means so much of time is needed. So much of cost will be involved. So I am sure AI can make a summary, but how much will it cost? That's the question. Uh, so. The answer for that is yes, but the real question is, is it possible to do it cheaper? So maybe a few years later, 
video summaries will happen. Uh, is it possible for a program be translated into French? I am sure there are translators available if that's your question. Uh, what type of computer to use for AI? So that's the question that I'm talking about. So that's the question from Dennis. Guys, if you want to do these AI things on your own computer, you have to buy a gaming computer, any computer which can run games. Okay, uh, I, in my, in, I have computers, gaming computers. I have basic computers. They cost me like $2,500. So that's the basic computer, guys. I mean, there are cheaper computers which can do the AI, like $1,000 computers, $1,500 computers. They can do AI, sure, but it'll be very, very slow. So if you want to do it properly, then you have to look at a computer, which is at least $2,000 to $3,000 computer. So those computers can help you study AI, use AI with a good speed, okay? So that's the answer to Dennis' question. If I want to create five videos, uh, again, uh, Muhammad, like I said, guys, AI video is still kind of new, so, and also very expensive. So I don't think you should focus too much on the AI for video. Like, it'll be very expensive, I think. Um, also, they're usually like only five seconds or 10 seconds. So <laughs> not very useful right now. Uh, let's see, uh, let's see, let's see. Thomas says, yes, it makes us faster. Okay, uh, website is free code camp, free code camp. That is the website. So those are all the questions in the chat. Uh, I don't know if there are any other uh, questions. Uh, if there are, uh, let me know, guys. I will try to answer. Uh, guys, if you want to stay in touch with me, uh, you all you have to do is just Google my name. My name is right there on the slide. Uh, you can see there right now. You just have to go online and just search. I'm doing it right now. Just search my name and you'll find out about me. So just find out about me. Go to my website, go to my GitHub, go to my Insta, wherever you want. Uh, a lot of people usually message me on LinkedIn. I usually reply within one or two days, uh, depending on my work and travel. That is the best way to get in touch with me. So just go ahead and Google my name, guys. My name is there on the screen it is there in the powerpoint that is the best way to touch in, uh, stay in touch with me um, uh, so usually i reply within one or uh, two days with whatever questions you have some people uh, you know they, they connect with me on linkedin and all i don't mind it uh, the only thing is please understand that i'm an old guy i have responsibilities work business things like that but i will reply i will reply to any message that comes to me within a day or two, that is definitely a good promise uh, that I can uh, uh, keep. Uh, how long do you think it will take to learn this? There's another question here from Glorious. Uh, see, guys, I, I this is something I think I've talked about before. See, learning is not something you can do and forget. Learning is always continuous. Like right now, uh, I just finished a project, so I have some free time. I'm kind of on vacation and all that. I am learning new things. So, so it's not about how long something will take to learn. It's about making learning a part of your lifestyle. So every week, sit and learn five hours, 10 hours. So this month, go and learn AI, you know, go and learn some basic coding. So make it a lifestyle, guys. That is what I will say. Uh, and of course, you know, I don't have a job, so I do freelancing. So what I do is, uh, whenever I don't have any work, instead of, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying, you know, watching movies, playing video games, but still every day I'll sit and learn two hours, four hours, I'll learn something new. Uh, so by the time I get my next project, I have new skills and I can do more things, you know, ask for more money. And again, I work on a project three, four months. Again, after the project gets over, I have one or two months of free time. I learn new things. So instead of thinking about how long it takes to learn something, don't go that way. Make learning a part of your lifestyle. Okay, it's like how you go to sleep, you exercise, you 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 attend a festival, you have a friend. Think of learning as a friend. You know, you don't you don't you don't meet a friend and forget about him, right? You have a real friend. You meet that friend regularly. You keep that friendship alive. 
Okay. Same thing with learning. You know, make learning part of your life. Uh, it's not about five hours, ten hours, how long it takes to learn AI. Yeah, it's just about using it. You know, don't put a deadline to these things. Uh, and I you know the more you learn, the more skills you have, and the more money you will make. And the proof is right here. As I said, I don't have a job. I am freelancing, only freelancing since 2012. And God's blessings, somehow life is going on. I'm not super rich, but it's okay. I make enough to pay the bills and have a overall good life. Uh, I hope that answers uh, the question. Any other questions? Uh, let me see in the chat. Uh, otherwise, AFDG is there. Uh, um, if she wants to wrap it up, that is fine with me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, see you tomorrow for another class with Jay as well. Uh, see you, everyone. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you for being here today. Bye, guys. Take care. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.